According to the United Nations Children's Fund, that's UNICEF, one in three children in Nigeria is out of school, totaling about 10.5 million and, uh, children. Now, at the primary level, and 8.1 million at the junior secondary school level. Now, despite various strategies taken to reduce the number, it seems to be rising. Now, it is on this prem premise that uh, the Senate is advocating sanctions for parents who neglect their children and deny them formal education in the country. You have details in this report. Habib is a 12-year-old boy. I found hawking on the road during a sensitization walk and getting children out of the streets and back into school. My mommy is at home. She sent me out to sell my anchor. I feel bad because, because I'm supposed to be in school now, but I'm not in school. From Mikeja on the bridge to the Lagos State House of Assembly, this foundation in Lagos is calling on parents, teachers, government, to play their part in ensuring that children are taking to schools and giving quality education. Speaking with the 12-year-old boy, we approach his father, who is a petty trader, to ask why his son was not in school. I had a son in school, and I had a son in school, and I had a son in school. Secondly, in the elite and be several to look at look what about the dad in the only can he only do only to repeat a little pot in a way a lebanli a kajin by any way illegal so yeah no man no his response shows his reluctance even when the ngo offered to take his son up the streets this is one of the challenges of child education in nigeria once parents wake up to their responsibility, half the problem is solved, in my opinion. But we need to make sure that law is got it, and parents are actually penalized for not sending their kids to school. We should move away from going to school to learn to get a job. We should move our, 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 our education system should be connected to skills that can make you earn a living. One of the focal points of this walk was getting lawmakers to address the increasing number of out-of-school children. They say plans are already in motion to increase the budget for education. The administration of Ashwadi Balamet Nubu as president is one of the key focal points of, uh, of his administration, is education. And of course, a lot of financing is going to go into that to make sure that adequate uh, uh, funding goes into the educational sector. As more conversations center around the education system in Nigeria, this NGO says parents and the government are the first point of call in reducing the number of children on the streets. In New Lua, Ugola, TVC News, Lagos. Well, joining us from the United Kingdom to speak more on this is CEO of IA Foundation, Runke Adiagbo. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Veronica, and thanks for having me. Right. The Senate, in its wisdom, believes uh, that uh, sanctioning parents uh, is the way to go to checking the number of uh, the out-of-school children that we have. And you, too, are also in support of this. How much of a difference would this make? Right. I, I just want to commend the um, Senate uh, for taking this initiative because as part of our advocacy strand of our organization, it's saying that this is a multifaceted problem and the parents are part of this problem. In the footage you just showed earlier, you saw me on the streets there struggling with a parent to actually encourage them to send their kids to school. We were practically telling the parent, we will pay for that child's schooling. We'll provide everything the child needs. And the father was struggling. Up till now, we've been chasing the father to allow us to send that child to school. The father re refused. He said this child should go on the street, hawking handkerchief. We explained to him that if this child gets education, this child will take the whole family out of poverty. Still, the father was adamant that this child would not go to school. So I think parents are part of the problem. So if we start penalizing parents for not sending their kids to school, I think half of the problem will be solved. Well, interesting position. But then um, you, you, you've actually given an example to some parents who are not willing to send their children. But how are we so sure that this 
um, this, when it comes to law, when it becomes law, if it's criminalized, we will not be further marginalizing those who are already marginalized, you know, stricken with poverty. Because some will tell you that they do not have the wherewithal, even they can't even feed, uh, you know, just a day in order to, uh, let alone sending their children to school. So how are we going to ensure that we do not punish those who do not really have the power or the means to send their wards to school? As we are aware, education is free and it's compulsory. So the fact that they are not even sending their kids to school is illegal. So these children were not brought into this world for child labor. These children are individuals in their own rights. And education is their entitlement. It's, an, it's a fundamental human right. So what gives the parent the God-given right to say their child will not go to school? It's absolutely unacceptable. So parents need to be penalized. They need to understand this. Because if you look at it, there's a vicious circle. It is parents that have no education are the ones trying to deprive their children from having education. So therefore, their family will be in perpetual poverty. So what we are trying to do and what the government is trying to do, if this legislation goes through, is that we want to break that cycle of poverty in their family by making sure these kids go to school. Now, every parent has their responsibility to care for their children. If you can't afford to care for a child, why bring them into this world? So there is the assumption that for a, child, a parent to bring a child into this world, they can afford to sustain that child financially. But, Not but you know in this part of the world that we believe that children are blessings from God and if God blesses you, you don't reject them. Yeah, they are blessings from God, but an activity took place before you had that child and it was a conscious activity. So if you want to bring a child into the world, make sure you have the means to be able to support that child. Because we need to start tackling that. We can't afford parents to keep having children that they can't afford to sustain or financially put through a school. So this is another way of telling parents that, you know what, you need to make sure you have the number of children that you can actually afford. So this is, a, in my opinion, a good way to constrain parents from just having children which they cannot put through education. Hmm. There are some that actually the parents want to send, uh, the parents actually sent them to school, but they become um, uh, truants or truants or what do we call them? And they don't go to school. They insisted that they want to go to school. They want to do other things. They want to learn, you know, skills apart from, you know, going to the four walls of the classroom. How do you think that can be handled? It, would the parent be also blamed for that? Right. So that's what we call the universal basic education. So basically primary school all the way to GSS3. When you get to GSS3, you can then make that decision that you want to go on a vocational path, but you need to have the basic education. Even if you want to become a carpenter or a plumber, you need to be able to speak English. You need to be able to add. So you need to have that very basic education. You need to be, you need to be literate to be able to do business, to be able to engage people. So you need to have that. Then you can further on go on to do whatever you want to do. And as you know, we need artisan within the economy. So we want to encourage people as well to go down the route of vocational, but get that basic education first before you decide to go down the vocational route. Now, the, when you look at uh, the states, talking about subnationals now, that have contributed to this number of out-of-school children, we have Kebi, Sakwoto, Yobi, and on the floor uh, of the Senate, while this conversation was going on, one of the senators uh, accused state governors of not playing their part, uh, especially some of the states in the north, with at ensuring that uh, basic education is free uh, for all as it is because they have to contribute about 50% to ensuring that uh, these children go to school. So how do we begin to hold these states accountable at this point? Okay, very good question. Um, my foundation has been existing for five years, and this is one of the things we've been advocating about. There is what we call the, the um, uh, tripartite funding, where you the governors contribute 50% and UBEC as well contribute 50%. But what we understand is happening now is that the state governments are not contributing their own share to that pot of money. And nobody is holding the state governments to ransom. So what we had to do is we had to uh, engage our patron. Our patron is uh, Mr. Femi Falano, SAN. And he started suing the state governors now that you need to contribute your own share of money. Because the problem we have is that when the states don't contribute their own share of the money, 
then that money sits in Ubeck's pot. They won't release that money unless they get the part funding from the state governors. So the what Ubeck is sitting on this pot of money, now. which is meant to pay for children to be able to go to school. So now governors need to take this seriously because when we uh, got them, um, when litigation starts, they will have no choice but to donate their own share of the part funding. So I want to encourage all state governors this morning to please oblige and actually provide their own part of the part funding. Now, I was really surprised when I was listening to the debates uh, at the um, House of Assembly. Um, it was actually a Lagos State Senator, Senator Idias Adebule, who actually tendered this motion. Lagos State only has 6% of out-of-school children between the ages of 6 to 15. Kirby State has the IS at 67% based on the statistics by cent size, right? I would expect the governor of Kirby State to be shouting from the rooftop that, you know what, we need to do something about this because my state has the highest number of out-of-school children between 6 to 15 years old. So I want to encourage all governors to work on their senators to make sure they pass this legislation and it becomes law and the government also do their part by contributing their own share of the funding. Shouldn't there be some, uh, perhaps, shouldn't we also look at penalizing some of the state governors who are not contributing their quota, the 50%, because we cannot just punish parents, but uh, the state government has to do something that will give parents the enablement to be able to send their children to school, but we see that uh, a majority of them are not doing that. Shouldn't exactly. they also fit the music? Absolutely, and that's what I just said, that um, our patron, Mr. Femi Fallon, or SAN, is actually suing all those state governors that are not contributing their own share of the funding. For me, it begs the question, what check and balances do we have in the system to penalize governors? Assuming Mr. Femi Fallon does not take it upon himself to sue the state governors, what mechanism have we got to make sure the state governments do what they ought to do? Who is there to penalize the state governors? That's a fundamental question we need to ask ourselves because it seems no one is penalizing them, therefore they're getting away with murder. So hopefully Mr. Femi Fallon will be successful uh, and actually before he goes to court, maybe the governors will do the needful because this is a burning platform. State governors cannot be complaining about insecurity when they are not educating their citizens. If you don't educate your citizens, they have no skills, therefore they have no choice but to resort to crime. So you cannot be complaining that you've got high level of insecurity when the governors are not doing the needful. Yeah, so I, I'm worried about um, what you think contributes to the um, high rate of out-of-school children, especially, you know, the ages, to, ages 6 to 15 that you alluded to, you know, Kebi being the highest, 67.6%, uh, Sokoto, 66.4%, Yobe, 62.9%, and uh, the Lagos, which you mentioned, is, you know, far you know, uh, higher, I mean below rather, 6.4%, and Anambra being the least 2.9% out of school children. What exactly do you think is responsible for that high rate in those, you know, especially in that northern part of, of the country? And then we have just little rates in, uh, you know, just contributing a little to out of school children, uh, talking about Lagos, Anambra, etc. What exactly is responsible? Okay, it's pretty obvious what is responsible, and it's multifaceted. Insecurity challenges is one of the biggest reasons why we have a high level of insecurity. In 2014, we saw how the Chibok girls, over almost 300 girls, were kidnapped from their school. And that hasn't stopped. Just two weeks ago, in Sokoto and in Kaduna, school children were kidnapped. Now, any parents would not feel comfortable or confident sending their kids to school if they are going to be thinking their kids might not come back home from school, that kid will be kidnapped and then they will have to sell all their property to get that kid back. So the government needs to fix the issue of insecurity. Just this week, Tuesday, my foundation collaborated with another foundation in the UK. We actually launched a report on insecurity and education in Nigeria at the British House of Parliament. Because this, we, we see this as a very important issue. Just this Tuesday, we had that. And I'm also very excited about the news two weeks ago that the Commission for Our Jerry and Out of School Children, which has been, now been set up, they've now appointed an executive director, retired mm. General J Jaffa, to run that commission. And I'm hoping that the government will give this commission all the support it requires to make sure they can reduce the out of, number of out of school children, especially in the north. Also, cultural issues, because some of these um, out of school children are girls. And some cultural uh, background believe that girls need to be married off 
very early when they are very young rather than send them to school so if we try and deal with all these issues and make uh, parents realize that yes your girls will get married but please let them get the desired education first you know so every uh, arm of the government needs to work collaboratively NGOs also need to work collaboratively to make sure we imbibe this spirit of education in everyone in the country even adults when they see children who are out of school they should be able to approach them and say why aren't you in school what we also expect is the government to set up what we call mobile courts and also mobile police to go around picking up kids from the school and uh, from the street who are not in school now i want to drove my art to anambra state they have the lowest in the world the highest jump scorer is from anambra state that state must be doing something right what I would want to encourage, I want to encourage every other state government to go and find out how Anambra State have been doing this and why they have the lowest number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. So these are some of the suggestions I want to make to the state government and the federal government in terms of how to address the issues that is affecting out-of-school children. Uh, now, this report... So, sorry sorry to put in. Talking about Anambra, you know, is it is it not, um, I don't know, um, looking at the statistics, if you look at those who have high rates of out-of-school children, look at their population compared to that of Anambra, could that be as a result of the little population compared to places that are higher, uh, do you think? Not necessarily. I think it's about leadership. If the governor of the state takes education seriously, then they will deal with it seriously. On the floor of the Senate, the Senate president was saying that when he was the governor of Akwaibom, he made sure there was a law that says any parent that doesn't send their child to school will, have, will be in prison for six months. So it's about the leadership. If the leadership takes it seriously, yes, it will happen. But if leaders are complacent about it, they don't see it as an issue, or they see it as, you know, it's the norm, then you will see the consequence of it. The number of the population of the state should not matter because education is free. And legally, you should send your child to school. So what it is is that for those states that are very high out of school children, they are breaking the law. And mm. what is the government doing about that? Now, are we as a country and a society painting education in the right light? We see sometimes uh, how we celebrate persons who are part of perhaps reality shows, give them huge sums of money, people in certain areas of life. We just celebrate certain uh, things, but when it comes to education, we do not see as much reward being given to people. We do not see as much celebration. So, isn't that painting a wrong picture already, even in the minds of these young persons who believe what is the essence of getting an education when I could just veer into one venture or the other and become popular and make money? I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because we also celebrate people who have good education. On the world stage, we have Dr. Ngozi Koje Uwela representing us and doing so well. She had her education mainly in Nigeria. We've got Dr. Um, um, Adeshino Akimumi also representing us. They got their education in Nigeria, so we are celebrating them. Just recently, uh, Dr. Akimumi got the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership right we are celebrating him because of his education now everybody has the freedom to um put themselves in for any competition and get the reward there's nothing wrong about that but having good education and putting yourself in for an event that gives you lots of money are two parallel things i'm sure those who are winning those stuff they're educated all we are saying to you is yes you can do whatever you like but please get education because we want to reduce the number of illiteracy in this country because that is part of our problem if everyone has got the basic education half of nigeria's problem will be solved because we know that the future manpower needs to be uh, powered we need people who've got good education why is the likes of china and india leading in the world It's because they take education seriously nigeria needs to start doing that and we need to do the relevant things we need to do to make sure we everyone is educated and we reduce the number of child illiteracy and the number of out of school children in Nigeria. Interesting stuff. But I'm wondering, wondering what kind of um, partnerships or uh, collaboration uh, are there between the government, um, civil society organizations, and stakeholders in ensuring and uh, to tackle the root uh, causes of um, children being out of school. Yeah. So we have a coalition of um, NGOs working in the educational space. 
and um, my organization is trying to make sure that organization is actually working very out and shouting from the rooftop. I will be the first to say that the engagement between uh, the government and NGOs is not where it ought to be. Um, I can tell from my example, we've tried severally to engage the government to make sure we can work collaboratively because at my NGO goes on the street picking up kids. And I think we can work with the government for every attempt to collaborate with the government hasn't been very positive in my opinion. I mean, as I said, last Tuesday, we launched this um, report at the uh, British House of Parliament. We tried our best possible to engage the newly appointed um, executive director of the commission for Alma Jerry. We couldn't get through to him. We've tried our best to actually get through to state governments as well. Some are very receptive. The likes of Lagos State, Ogun State, they are very receptive and they are working collaboratively with NGOs. But some states are in denial about the problem. They don't see it as an issue at all. And then they come forward and say, oh, we've got insecurity. Why won't you have insecurity when you are not educating your citizens? So I want to appeal to the government of the day to please engage NGOs. There are lots of us working in this space. Engage us. We want to work collaboratively with it. Our agenda is the same. We just want to reduce the number of out-of-school children. I am very excited about with this government because I can see that there is a political will to deal with this issue. The uh, Minister of Education as well has said he wants to reduce the number of out-of-school children by 25%. We now need to see action. And we are ready to work with the government. And I'm sure other NGOs working in this space are ready to work with the government. So please, engage us. So talking about working with government, I'm um, taking you back to uh, that report where you were engaging a particular parent who was insisting on the child not going to school. What's the plan moving forward? How does your organization intend to address that matter? Yes. So, uh, um, as I said, because the, the Senate is now, I mean, I think it's going through second reading, this idea of penalizing the parents. Um, we haven't got the legal authority to penalize that parent. All we can do is to appeal to that parent to send their child to school by using, uh, telling them that we're going to pay for the school, uh, school fees and all that. So that's the carrot we can dangle in front of the parents. But assuming um, we have the legal authority to be able to prosecute that parent, we would have prosecuted that parent. You know. So what we want to do is to encourage the government to take their job seriously. That footage, up, that event happened on the 19th of October, 2023. That 12-year-old boy is still on the street, hawking handkerchief. And in Alausa, in front of the Lagos State Secretariat, can you imagine the seat of government in Lagos State? And nobody can do anything about it because the parent is adamant. Somebody needs to be penalizing that parent for doing what he did. But we don't have the powers to do that. That is the responsibility of the government to prosecute these parents. And I look forward to the day that parents are going to be prosecuted for not sending their kids to school. So we need all these mobile courts because the government, the state government cannot be everywhere. But if you have all this mobile court and these mobile policemen that will go around, they will just pick that child from the parents and they go and put the child in school. So please, we need the collaboration of local government, collaboration of state government and federal government and NGOs to all work collaboratively to deal with this menace. Hmm. So I'm wondering uh, when you were actually listing some of the things that people need to do to show that they are not out of school, at least some things that basic things that basic minimum that they need to do uh, in order to be seen as educated. You mentioned part of it, you know, being able to speak English. You know, you mentioned that in passing. So I wanted to be sure whether um, the ability to speak an English language also will be considered as you, you know, attending school. I just want you to expatiate on that you know, against the backdrop of the fact that we've been talking about having another lingua franca for our country other than the English language because it has been a way of, you know, suppressing us, you know, especially with this new colonization, which we want to extricate ourselves from. It's a very interesting question uh, because on the 2nd of March, uh, my foundation had a fundraising activity at the Civic Center at Victoria Island where we raised funds to be able to pick up children after school. And at that event, we brought up some of the children which we picked up from the street. And believe me, when we picked up these children from the street, they couldn't speak a word in English language, right? We've picked them up for five years now. These children are speaking English so fluently. I even joked about it at that event that their English is even better than mine. So... These children are teachable. As far as we're concerned, English is our lingua franca in Nigeria today. 
and everyone can learn English easily. No one is complaining that they can't learn English. But they need to go to school to be able to learn English. All right. Education is free. So what's the problem? All right. That's a fine place to leave this conversation. Uh, CEOIA Foundation, Ronke Adiago, thank you for your time on the program. Thanks for having me.